everybody says that we just started out as a new club, so everyone just is going to take our years before we can win the league. Well, I said that's not right. I said we can win this year. I still think we can. Of course, we, we can, you, can, you can get the good players, but you can't increase the, your, your domestic population. You know? It takes a period of time. So I think it'll take us you know, three or four years to get up to where the Titans are, just like it's taken them that long to do. You mean in, in terms of crowd numbers? Crowd numbers. The Titans are getting 15,000 mm. crowd out of a, a base population of 380,000 people, which is pretty substantial when you think about it. You know? But that's where we'd like to go. But um, in the meantime, that's why they've got people like me subsidising the team, keeping them going, yeah, so we've got the right standard. And as the A-League gets bigger, the FA will have to look, I think, to allowing an extra uh, overseas player in to keep the standard up. We don't want to dilute the standard. So we've got, we've got to bring some other good players from Asia or other places to keep the standard up. That's what I hope anyway. If, yeah. that, if that's 15 and the AFL comes in and they're pulling 15, can yeah. that market support all that? Well, we're at a different time of the year, see? Yeah. So the uh, A-Leagues will be at the summer months. Yeah. And the, and the, see, we, we fund this club yeah. out of our industrial projects, so yeah. it's, it's not dependent upon yeah. community funds, yeah. but it is the benefits, hopefully, there for the community. So yeah. we expect to lose money this year, next year, and the year after. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, we go in with that expectation. So Profits beyond that? I think profits are about five years away myself, really. really. Mm. But uh, that's not the reason we're doing it. I think with regional teams, that have got a limited domestic population, that's the best you can do, regardless of how good the team is. Mm. You know? Whereas I think our team's as good as any in the league, really. I mean, tonight I think we proved it, really, because we played Raw, Raw second favourites to win the comp, I think, right? Yeah. What gives you your thoughts that maybe you could still go through and beat still in the back Well, people say that's a hard goal to achieve, but if you look at our defence tonight and you realise that 1-1 one, one or, you know, a nil all is a draw, it's not, it's not a defeat, <laughs> It's very, very hard to see how that defence can get cracked, isn't it? Because the Raw threw everything they possibly could at it tonight, and it was only a penalty goal that got through on the end, you know? So I think, you know, I think we are. I think we're in a good position. The defence played brilliantly tonight, and we had two of our guys uh, out tonight. Ad Adama couldn't play because of his transfer didn't come through. He definitely would have been the team. And we've got a new player, Anderson, just arrived from Brazil, who's Robson's brother. You saw Robson score the last goal there. He's played with people like Kakar and all that in the junior grade from Brazil. So there'll be two new stars to bring on next week. Yeah. Frank said if he goes around the field, he'll walk down. What did he say? Pitt walk Street. down Pitt Street. Berry's bum. Berry's yeah. bum. Well, it'll be good. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you'll say that, on, if you'll say that on, on video, I'll be there. Don't worry. <laughs> well, look. Good enough to go through undefeated, Frank. No chance. I'll be on my backside in Pitt Street if that happens. <laughs> we've played 20 games so far undefeated and, and, and look, we've played Singapore, we beat them 5-0, we played New Caledonia which is 120th in the world, we beat them 5-0, we played Hong Kong, we beat them uh, I think it was 5-0 as well um, and then we played Fulham in the Premier League, we beat them 2-1. Uh, so yeah, we've played the Raw, we've beaten them, we would have beaten them 3-0, we've been 3-1, you know. So, I mean, Celtic beat them 3-1, so we're about the same as Celtic, I suppose. <laughs> you know? probably, probably a bit, I think, the coverage of the game certainly rose up more against Rugby League, considering we're going to the Rugby League finals. There's a lot of interest in this game, really, and we have 20,000 people here, still in the Rugby League season, and still, you know, with all that's still going on. So, But I think it's good. The A-League standard certainly lifted, I think, and... Uh, we showed that tonight, you know. But I was hoping we'd win 6 0, but never that. <laughs> <laughs> I think, in retrospect, as you get older, uh, football's a better game for children for, and for skill wise, you know. I, so I, I think football's the way for Australia. And I think, you know, we're 16th in the world now. A few more years we can be top of the world, really. And what we've got to do, though, is start getting uh, the Australian competition and Australian players playing for Australia and get rid of this concept that everything that's happening in Europe is superior. That's what we've taken on, really. Everyone, like Pim Verbeek, says that uh, we've got to have you know, pet players playing in Europe. Well, why would that be? We beat Fulham 2-1. You know, why would you take players from Fulham when you wouldn't take them from Gold Coast? You know, that's, that's all I'm saying. We've beaten them. We've played them on the field. And um, although Jason will say it was the start of their season, I mean, they're only four weeks over. <laughs> the season was four weeks over and they start training again. Mm -hmm. So all those guys are professionals. They're pretty... They're pretty uh, nobody likes to lose to a crappy team like Gold Coast United. If, if you're in the Premier League, you, I went over to England and saw all these articles and the Fulham website wasn't too complimentary about it either. <laughs> yeah. So no one likes to lose the guys. You know? But um, I think you know, we've got to pick a Australian players. I think in our team, I think people like um, you know, Joel Porter, right? um, Michael Thwaite, if you saw Michael play today, he'd be a brilliant player. You know? mm. And um, 
they should be considered for the Socceroos as well as Jason. You know? And we played against Perth the week before and we had, um, they had Coyne and um, uh, Stradoski and ja Jacob Burns there. Well, certainly Stradoski's a very good player, but the other two I think you know, know better than, um, than Michael Fate is. You know? I think Michael Fate's just a, 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 real, a real necessity for the Socceroos. And I think the same with um, you know, our striking's been bad at the soccer level. I can't see why someone like Joel Porter wouldn't get a run. Highest goal scorer in England and, and then he, he, um, he scored, I think he had played four soccer games and scored seven goals. <laughs> so I don't see why he wouldn't get a run again. I, you know, I think those guys deserve a, the opportunity. Why should it be a, a, a handicap, the fact that they want to play in Australia? Or Craig Moore for that matter. You know, if they want to play in Australia, that's what we want, surely. We want, we want the game to be here in Australia for the Australian public. That's what we want it for. Well, I mean, you're great. And what do we want to, want to have an Australian Soccer Federation for and all that if we don't want to promote the game here? Because hmm. this is the company where we live. It's no good saying to everybody, go to Europe and watch a game. <laughs> and watch all of our Australians and all different different clubs. We want to have a strong competition here. It's probably the most...